Before we get started, if you played Dragon Quest VII, it's a really good game. Go play it. It's really good. Hello everybody, I am Joseph, the first J of JMDJ Studios, and welcome back to another one of my rambling videos, Joe's Ramblings. Now, in this vlog, I just wanted to talk to you guys about some, and this video is way overdue, I realize that, but I still wanted to talk and get my opinions out there. So, uh, back to the main topic, the Nintendo Switch. Now, I just want to talk about my uh, feelings and opinions towards the Switch and some of the games that they put out for it and things like that, so let's just talk about it. <clears throat> so, the trailer itself um, was pretty cool. The, the first thing that I noticed in the trailer was the, the absence of children, which is interesting. Nintendo has gone on record, if I'm not mistaken, and they said that they wanted to kind of focus and get their target audience back, which is like the hardcore gamer. For those who aren't history buffs with Nintendo, Nintendo used to be the go-to place to play consoles. Went with the NES and the Super NES, they were the, you know, the pinnacle. They were the top. Then, you know, with the 64, when it came out, um, they were still pretty good, but it was definitely lower, and the reason was because you know, Sega had entered the market and, you know, they started to appeal towards a more older audience. And PlayStation 1 came out and used optical discs. They used the disc. And that could hold more for a game. And then you had companies, especially like Square Enix, who wanted to make this large, massive RPG like Final Fantasy VII. And they couldn't do it on a Nintendo cartridge. And then the old cartridges, there, there's a reason I'm talking about all this. The old Nintendo 64 cartridges and everything before this, the cost to produce them were increasing. It was expensive. This was more expensive than a disc. And it couldn't hold as much memory. The only thing that the 64 cartridge had over top of the disc is the disc had to load. And some of them could take a long time to load. <laughs> Whereas, the 64, no load times. You put it in, turn it on, the logo pops up right away. So you're good to go. And I do believe that there are a few cartridge-based games that did have load times, but it, I think you know the loading screen would pop up and it would only be a few seconds and you'd be good to go. Very rarely will you see a cartridge-based game with a loading time that is a long time. Because I, I, I can't even think of any examples off the top of my head. Nintendo lost a lot of their audience with uh, the 64 because of that, because a lot of third-party developers were like, we can't develop for that. Now, a lot of people, this is also important too, a lot of people are saying Nintendo needs to go back and they need to focus on a console that's, you know, super powerful and, and, and graphics are important. Well, graphics used to be important, but how important did they used to be? Did you know that the Nintendo GameCube was the most powerful? Actually, I think that I might be mistaken, but if, I, if I'm not mistaken, it goes the PlayStation 2, and then the GameCube, and then the Xbox. The GameCube was more powerful, if I'm not mistaken, than the PlayStation 2. And yet, it didn't sell as well. Now, the PlayStation 2 had other reasons for selling well, including the fact that it was a disk drive, and the intense uh, marketing on it. I said disk I meant DVD enabled so you can play your DVDs on it and at the time DVD was a new exciting thing and a lot of people wanted to get DVD players but they were expensive so it was like if you buy a PlayStation 2 you get a game console and a DVD player and I know that was an appeal for me as well back in the day and you know also the aesthetic of the GameCube probably had something to do with that but it was a powerful console one of the most powerful on the market at the time and Third-party support was there, more so than the 64, but not enough. And you, we've all seen the success of the Wii. A lot of people mark it off as a fluke. I don't mark it off as a fluke. Let me tell you why. Nintendo knew what they wanted to do with the Wii. They knew the audience they wanted to get, and they knew the kind of games they wanted to make for it. Nintendo wanted to innovate, and they did, and they marketed it towards everybody everywhere, and it was a brand new way to play games. It was a, it was a revolutionary. You can't deny that. It entered into a new gaming era where we use motion controls, and a lot of the things that we did is still being used today, and not just by Nintendo. 
but the point is that I'm trying to make was the, they marketed the Wii correctly, they did not market the Wii U correctly, it was a very confusing launch lineup, there were several people, and I was one of them, when it was first announced, I was confused about what it was, when it was coming out, I didn't, you know, there was so much confusion, and the advertisements and the things that they said didn't quite add up and make sense. This leads me up to the Nintendo Switch. <clears throat> I can't tell you how many, I've even been in a few debates before, mobile versus console gaming, and a lot of people are saying mobile gaming can take the place of console gaming. Mobile gaming can be that because it has all these capabilities and you can take it with you and woo. And I'm like, well, there's no good games for it. There's a few games for it, like, you know, like Pokemon Go, for example, is a prime example of a game that's really good for it. But there's a lot of problems for hardcore gamers to get into the mobile audience. The majority of gamers on smartphones are casual gamers. Gamers that don't know what Guitar Hero are, or don't know what Mario is, or don't care about Assassin's Creed. It's those kind of gamers, majority. I'm speaking in a majority sense. <clears throat> now there are some gamers, like me, I play mobile games, I play Angry Birds, I play uh, Pac-Man and Tetris on there, I play um, Pokemon Go, and there's so many others that I play on the mobile. So, then, you know, on the console side, it's like, well, it's just, it's more powerful, and, you know, it's it's different than a PC, because you've got, you've got the controller in your hand, and a lot of people prefer that, and, you know, you got your exclusive first-party titles, but you can't take it with you, and we all have been accustomed to that. And Nintendo is bridging this gap to where you're going to have a tablet that you can take your game and take it with you. And if you don't want to take it with you, if you want a standard controller, they're going to have a standard controller that you can play with. And it's going to be crazy. That's the main selling point, I think, of the Switch. Uh, as we know currently. And that's cool. That's, that's a really cool factor, because, I mean, I can't imagine, you know, like, I'm trying to beat, like, Paper Mario Color Splash right now, and I can't, you know, I have to stop when I go to work, but it's like, what if I could, like, pick it up and take it with me? That'd be nuts! Or what if I, you know, there, there's so many situations in which I have to bring my 3DS instead. And now I'm going to be able to bring a home console with me. And that brings me back to third-party support. They did a chart of, it's over 50-some developers that have already signed up for the Switch. Bethesda, there's some big name ones, Bethesda, Activision, Rockstar, which I think they're under like Take Two, but whatever, you know, they're in there. Um, Ubisoft, there's a lot of really big ones, Platinum Games, 505, there's EA, surprisingly, so there's a lot that was on there, and the, in the trailer we saw a Zelda game, and we saw a Mario game, and we saw some Amiibo, but we also saw Skyrim, and we saw NBA. And that's important. You know, I'm not a fan of sports games that much, but I own a lot of sports games, particularly the older ones. But I've got a whole shelf on my 360 of sports games. Sports games are important. There's a lot of people who buy them. I was looking um, at my brother's uh, game collection for the PlayStation 4, I think it was, and he's gotten every Madden that's came out. And he is obsessed with football. He loves it. And there are tons of people who play those sports games. I know a guy from work, every time I start talking about games to him, he brings up a wrestling game. It's like, and that's fine. That's cool. But we need to have those on the Switch. And it looks like that they're going to be there, which is great. And then as far as graphics go, <clears throat> I think we've entered a time period where graphics don't matter as much. You know, I was underwhelmed, I'm not going to lie, with the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. I remember when uh, I first got the PlayStation 4 and um, it was at our Game Awards that year and it was the new thing and we were all excited about it. It was a great console, but uh, we were playing some of the games and I only heard one person talking about like the graphics and I was like, well, they do look pretty good, but they don't look much better than what was. I mean, they look a lot better than games that started on the PlayStation 3, but if you were to compare The Last of Us with Killer Instinct, or not Killer Instinct, um, 
Kill Zone on the PlayStation 4. Uh, I mean, it is more powerful, and that's good. And the PlayStation Pro is going to be an upgrade from that, and that's good. You know, the third party developers need power, but they also need storage space, which leads me back to the Switch. It's going back to cartridges. I predicted this, a lot of people predicted it, and a lot of us wanted it. And I was actually in a debate on this as well on Twitter the night before they announced the Switch. Um, somebody said, bring back cartridges, and I, I think I liked the post. And then somebody responded to both of us saying, um, yeah, return to the thing that killed Nintendo. Well, the cartridge wasn't technically the thing that hurt them in the first place. In a way, like I said it was, but there was a lot more than just that. But, but let's, let's flash back to what I said. Back then, the cartridge couldn't hold as much as a disc. It's backwards now. And I know that's hard to wrap your mind around, but hang with me here for a minute. I'm not going to get too technical. I'm not going to get too into the specs. But basically... We're in an era now where you can store a crap ton of data, like 32 gigabytes on a little flash drive, or like a, like a flash drive or a SD card. You can store it on those things, and that's incredible. We also have cloud-based storage. So if you think about it, a cartridge can hold more than a dual-layer Blu-ray disc. There are several articles relating to this and if I think about it I'm gonna post some of those in the description so if you're interested in learning how a cartridge can hold more than a disc look in the comments below but if I were to ask a developer what would you rather do would you rather make a game that's this big but the graphics look a little bit better than they did the, the last game that you made or would you rather make a game that's this big and have the graphics look identical or maybe a little bit lower I think the developers are going to be like, I want the bigger world. Because we're in an era where these massive open world games are trying to grow larger and larger. We've seen it with Fallout 3 moving into Fallout 4, moving into like The Witcher 3, uh, Skyrim. All of these games are trying to get massive. Even the Assassin's Creed games are starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the map size is huge and it's like... it. it it's great because they're putting a lot of design and detail into these worlds and to do that they have to have the storage capacity now I don't know if they're cheaper to produce than CDs than blu-rays but I know that as far as being a consumer it's cheaper to purchase these things than it is a blu-ray disc so I'm assuming that it is cheap the 3ds uses this technology already I can see it transitioning over to this. Now that leads me into the last thing. Um, specs aside, we don't know anything. Nothing has been confirmed on specs. The only thing that we do know, is there is a rumor that the actual screen on the TV is going to be 1080p, implying that the dock will support a boost for the Switch, which will mean that the touch, the, the gamepad, if you will, will have a 720 uh, P screen and it will be multi-touch, but that's just a rumor. We don't know anything yet And we also know that it is running on a uh, Tegra X1 chip. I think is what it's called, but it's not the Tegra X1. It's a custom-built Tegra chip So it's not even an X1. It's a custom-built chip and that is also speculation But it's heavy speculation a lot of people are just saying it's confirmed if these things are true the graphic capabilities will be there. Um, the Tegra chips are actually used in a lot of like smartphones and stuff today, which is cool because that's what we really want with the mobile capability. But this one's supposed to be able to cool itself down, the custom one, once again just speculation, which would imply longer battery life. Uh, Tegra chips that cool themselves down give you longer battery life in your phone. So if that's true here, we might be looking at a battery that will last the length of a phone or shorter. That would be impressive. That would win a lot of people over because if it has a, a battery life, it can't, I don't think it can have a battery life of like the 3DS, but if it can have a battery life of my phone, dude, I'm good to go. That's, that's better than the gamepad that, for the Wii U. That's a step up in the right direction, I think. But, like I was saying, specs and everything aside, 
and gimmicks aside and being able to take it with us aside, let's talk about what's most important, and that's the games. Skyrim, on the go, I'm sold. Mario Kart um, and Splatoon, I figured those would be there. If they are um, going to be on the Switch and like they're not going to be like backwards compatible, which I don't think it will be, maybe, who knows. That's an important selling point, especially for the launch window of a game. You know, for me, like, I've got like 30-some Wii U games, so if it was backwards compatible with that, I'm good to go. And I've got like 100 3DS games, no joke, and if it was backwards compatible with that, I'm good to go. But let's just assume for a minute that it's not, and let's look at what games we've already seen. We've only seen uh, four games for it. We know Breath of the Wild's coming, and we're pretty sure it's going to be a launch title. We'll find out more on January 13th. That being said, the other game that I wanted to talk about, the, the most important I think in this, was the Mario game. Now it was a short, it was like six clips, six seconds of footage, and it was like, it was pretty cool, okay? Pretty, pretty cool footage, but I don't know, there's things, you can speculate about it, a lot of people are saying it's going to be a new open world Mario game. They did mention in a previous interview, and if I can, if I'll try to find that as well and put that in the description, if you so you can read it. They did talk about um, an interview. In an interview, they said they wanted to change the conventions of Mario, like they were changing the conventions of Zelda. If that were true, if they made a 3D Mario platformer that was truly an open, expansive world, that would change the convention. The only supporting fact that I can see in this trailer, and it's really easy to miss, but in the first part where Mario's doing the triple jump into like the weird dead desert area or whatever, it, there's a temple in the background with a beam of light coming out of it. Now, that could imply that it's a waypoint and that that's where you gotta go. If that's true, why include a waypoint if it's not gonna be an open world? That's gonna be really incredible. The only true open world Mario game we've had well, we had two, I guess. That was Super Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine. And neither one of those worlds were really massive, but they were open world. Heavily themed based levels and things like that. So, basically a hub world connected to other massive worlds. And you could go in and you could, you know, there's no time limit. There's no get to the end of the level kind of situation. You get a hint of what you gotta do. You get in the level and you can just play around in the level until you were like, okay, I should probably go get the star now, and then you can go do what you gotta do. Those kind of platformers have died out, but they're making a comeback, as you can see with um, A Hat in Time and Ukulele. And there's one, I can't remember what it's called, there's one in the eShop, something like Freeze Me, or something like that, I'm wanting to say. But it's a game very similar to Mario 64, in which you can freeze moving objects and things like that. That's the like the special ability in that game, so they are making a comeback. And I believe Ukulele will be extremely successful. I do believe we'll have more games like that from uh, Platonic Games, and I do think that Nintendo is realizing this, and I do think that this next Mario will be open world. Fingers crossed. But even if it's not, everything else implies to either a Mario Galaxy 2, as you can see like the planets in the background and stuff, which would be fine with me, Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 are fantastic. Or it's a sequel to 3D World, and if that's the case, I'm I'm fine with that. That one's going to underwhelm me, I think, a little bit. But Mario 3D World was a fantastic game. And 3D Land is a heavily underrated game on the 3DS. So I would enjoy it regardless of what it is. And even if it's something brand new, as, as long as it's Mario, I'm going to enjoy it. But I think it should be a 3D game because that's a flagship for Nintendo, and if they're launching side by side with, I mean, imagine if they launch with heavy hitters like they, uh, a re-release of Splatoon that did so well on the Wii U, but not, you know, the Wii U didn't sell that many copies, so, of itself, so there's a lot of Nintendo fans and a lot of fans that aren't really Nintendo fans but are interested in these games that will now purchase them on the Switch. If they launch with Splatoon, Mario Kart, a new Mario, and a new Zelda, plus Skyrim and NBA and a handful of others from the developers, it's going to have a strong launch lineup. I mean, just from Nintendo, imagine if you could get on day one for your console or soon, at, right out the door, 
Mario Kart 7, which if you don't own a Wii U, you haven't played Mario, I keep saying 7, Mario Kart 8, sorry, Mario Kart 8, out the door, Splatoon, right out the door, um, a new Mario game, a 3D Mario game at that, and a new Zelda, Breath of the Wild, which already looks fantastic. Nintendo still has the power to captivate a lot of minds um, around the world. As you can see, at E3, they went with one game. They went in with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and people flocked to it. There are crazy pictures on the internet of people flocking to play this game, and it was there was so much interesting things going on at E3, but it was like Zelda was up here, and the rest of E3 was down here. And that was nuts. That was nuts, because... You know, we got some minute details from Microsoft and Sony about their new upgraded versions of their pre of their current consoles. And more people were talking about Zelda, one game, than they were about new consoles, VR, new technologies, new games over here. So, it is true. And if you look at, you know, uh, one, one final closing note that I just want to say here, but I, I haven't heard anybody talking about it. But if this truly is a hybrid and Nintendo, you know, kind of stops with the 3DS after a while and they're making mobile games, like 3DS games for the Switch and home console games for the Switch, we will be getting a Pokemon home console game for the first time. Now, it's already confirmed that Sun and Moon they're, they, they said, I think they said they were going to make like a port uh, or something to the Wii U, or to the Switch, which is fantastic. Also, Ukulele comes out in March. Coincidence. Uh, Ukulele was already confirmed to come to the Wii U, the PC, I think it was the PC, but definitely the Wii U, the PS4, and the Xbox One. I myself am going to buy one of each because I'm going to play that that many times, so I want to have one different consoles and... I'm crazy, don't judge me. But it's very possible that Platonic Games will put this with the Switch. That would be like launching the 64 with Mario 64 and Banjo Kazooie. That would be crazy, okay? Crazy. Um, for those of you who don't know what ukulele is, uh, real quick, this will be the last thing I talk about. If you played games back in the 64 day, uh, if you played the Donkey Kong Country trilogy back in the day, Banjo Kazooie, Donkey Kong 64, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Perfect Dark, let's see, Way Back, Battle Toads, um, Diddy Kong Racing, all of those fantastic games back from the day, those guys are making ukulele. And they're making it like an N64 game, but with a massive, expansive open world. Imagine, if you know what I'm talking about, imagine walking into Mumbo's Mountain and Banjo-Kazooie and you find all ten Jiggies and it's like, alright, I'm going to move on to the next level. But wait a minute, I could spend five of these Jiggies and expand the world. So you do that and Mumbo's Mountain all of a sudden goes from this level to this level. And all of a sudden there's ten more Jiggies to find. And instead of leaving the world, you just keep expanding it until you unlock everything. That's what I'm talking about. And that's what ukulele is going to be doing. And that's going to be super cool. But thank you guys for watching. Comment below. What are your thoughts on the NX? What are your thoughts on the things that I said and my thoughts? And, you know, are you excited for it? I said NX again. Whatever. It's the Switch. Are you excited for it? Are you going to buy it? Are you going to wait? Do you need more information? Or are you already sold on it? Comment below. And if you want to debate with me about anything, comment below. Because I love doing that. Just keep it clean and healthy. And... I will do the same and we'll comment back and forth for a while and <clears throat> see where it takes us. And uh, make sure you subscribe because we got plenty of content uh, keeping coming at you guys. It's not proper grammar. It's early. <sighs> Best outro ever. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time!